this is Pat McDonald, your host for Vote for Vermont, where our tagline is listening beyond the sound bites. Tonight I'm all alone. Who knows where those guys are? I usually have a co-host with me, but not this <laughs> evening. But fortunately, I have a good friend with me, uh, Chris Winters, who is the Deputy Secretary of State. Chris, welcome to the show, and I apologize, your first time. Oh, thank you, Pat. Oh, I'm God. glad to finally be able to you do know, it. I've been doing this six years. You, well, we're going to keep you busy from now on. I right. know who to call. Jim's been on uh, a couple of times. He has. He's been yeah. on a few shows. Yeah. Yes. Well, he's a talker. <laughs> so we're counting on you to talk like he does. All right. I'll give All it right. my best shot. <laughs> so um, can you just, for our viewers, we like to ask our guests to talk a little bit about themselves and, um, and what a great town you live in. Sure. <laughs> I do live in a wonderful town. Right. I'm a fellow Berliner at this point. Right. Uh, I grew up in Williamstown, just oh, down, down the road. Down the road. Yep, and I went to colleges in, in Boston and Las Vegas and then San Diego. And as I like to say, I, I hit the ocean and turned around and came back. Uh, Wait a minute, who goes to college in Las Vegas? I, I was a running rebel. I got <laughs> a cr criminal justice degree at the University really? of Nevada, Las Vegas, when they had those great basketball teams. Wow. So. Well, I was thinking of yeah. something else besides basketball, no, but that's no, all right. No, no. <laughs> so I came back to Williamstown to, to raise my family and um, have lived in, in Williamstown and Cabot and now Berlin. Yep and have four kids, and uh, went to work in the Secretary of State's office right out of law school. I went to oh, law school in San Diego. Yeah. And uh, I haven't left since. It's been 24 years now I've been in the Secretary well, of State's office. Well, you've worked your, you, your way up. Worked I my way up. I remember you when I was in House GovOps with my least favorite bill of all times. You would come in with this bill this thick. <laughs> You didn't like the professional regulation no, bill? It was full of exciting stuff. Yes, exactly. But obviously, I love working at the Secretary of State's office. Um, worked for Deb Markowitz. Was appointed by Jim Milne. Oh, that was goes So it goes, back goes that far yeah. back. Uh, Deb kept me around, made me the director of professional regulation. Right. Jim kept me around as well, thankfully, and um, made me his deputy. It's That's five true. or six years ago now. So I, I know the office inside and out pretty I much at this do. point. I bet you do. You've had some good people working there, seriously. It's a, it's a great yeah. office. It's a, it's a great small agency yep. to work for, and we do such a variety of things that it, it's always interesting. Get to help people solve problems all yeah. the time. It's and a now great you're place back to work. downtown. You were up at the, uh, what do they call it? Redstone. Up Red, at Redstone. Redstone. That was, yep. That's a great building, but that's downtown where I is so much better. We I like think. being downtown yeah. right across from the Capitol. It's yeah. really a, a nice great. office. Uh, it's an OPR. I just I couldn't remember the OPR, initials. OPR, professional they say, regulation. We're doing the OPR bill. Oh That's no, right. weeks of of what do you need to be a whatever you know? Fifty different <laughs> professions, and yeah. and they've been hopping lately with all the COVID work, emergency licensing, and things like that. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I'll have to have yep. you back talk about that because sure. I have one I want you to add, and I'm not having any luck with legislators, all right. so we'll have to chat about it. But anyway. Um, Chris and I have been sort of been overseeing and looking uh, at uh, a bill that's been happening in Senate GovOps with uh, Senator Jeanette Whitish right. chair, and they've been looking at the elections bill and making, I have to give her a lot of credit, she's, she's solicited input from lots of people. Yeah. She asked um, me from Campaign for Vermont to be on and to mm -hmm. weigh in, and of course, that's, you're responsible for that, you and Will Senning. Um, and so um, I think she's done a really great yeah. job, and um, uh, she's, uh, this bill is, is, is great. I have some yeah. questions about it, though, sure. so I'm sort of glad you're, right. you're here um, because of uh, there's a couple of, there was a one member on the committee who voted no, and his, I talked to him at length one night. I, uh, he called me back. I wrote him an email. And he called me back, and his was the mailing ballots at home and then the um, curing the ballots, and mm -hmm. that was his big issue. So as we go through this, I'd like to talk about that. And I think this is, as I said before the show, this is the first time I've actually going through a bill line by line. So hang in with us yeah, because yeah. it's important you know the whole picture because I think the press is going to highlight certain things and instead of getting all yanked about it if you know the the whole bill it may make you feel better or not but, yeah uh, it's an important bill pat i mean you yes. could say there's nothing more important than your right to vote exactly. i mean it's the it's the core of everything and and, I, and I have to agree on the you know the, the approach that senator white took great. was to cast a really wide net she yep. invited everyone and anyone who might want to say something about this bill 
and we went through topic by topic right. by topic as to what should be included, and she came out with a really nice product yeah, on the other she side. Did. I, I, I must say the work product was, was good. I, yeah. um, I have some questions, and I know other people do. I, I felt bad for the secretary. He wrote a, I don't know if it was a commentary or just a, a letter about um, a fraud in Vermont yeah. and uh, nationwide, and the comments were atrocious. They were out of, out of sight, just over the yeah, edge. They yeah. were very, uh, I, well, I think people are just mad anyway. They haven't gotten over the yeah. last election. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really too bad. You hate to see it. People feel really strongly about yeah. this. It's, I think it's important that they focus on the facts. Yeah. What yeah. does this bill really do? And it, and it shouldn't be a partisan issue. People get really wrapped up into the party lines. Yeah, when but I also think if you're mad, there's ways to say it that won't get the other person so mad that they won't listen to you. Yeah. And if you want to make your point, you have to do it in a respectful way yeah. and, and with facts and direct. But if you call somebody all these names, I don't know about Jim, right. but I would turn <laughs> off immediately and say, sure. forget him or her. Yeah, we've, was, we've been called a few names over the last year. <laughs> bet. Well, I was called a few names when I worked in state <laughs> government, too, I think. Very bad. It's bad. <laughs> yeah. People yeah, need to... Bad need to figure out how best to get their, their point across, and it's not through hate, yeah. just saying yeah. people. And, but and anyway. I, yeah. oh. And I do think when it comes to elections, people forget that the, the people on the ground running these elections are their neighbors. They're, they might be Republicans. Right. They might be Democrats. Right. They might not care about party lines. This is about it administering fair elections so right. that everybody has a chance to vote. Right. We're not looking for one party or another to get an advantage here. We're looking for the fair administration of yeah. elections. Well, let's talk about that. Sure. Okay, so we're looking at S15, which just to confuse you all that are, that are <laughs> watching, this started out as a bill by Senator Hooker, and it was about defective ballots. Um, the committee chose not to do what they call a committee bill, so they incorporated Senator Hooker's bill into what's referred to as a strike all, where right. they took Senator Hooker's bill and used the title and struck it all out, but did include her, uh, her bill in it. So uh, that's probably why she said okay. <laughs> but anyway, it's under S15, and it's, um, it's out there. Now, I said there were three amendments that they talked about from Senator Benning, Senator Starr on appropriations. Did Senator Parent's bill pass? Because in the um, calendar, they didn't have a vote tally. Yeah, so uh, this is a very timely program. Actually, they're going to be discussing that tomorrow. Oh, are they? Yeah, uh, Corey they, they, Parents? Yep, yeah, we had some concerns about Senator Parents' amendments, and we can talk about those okay. if you want. Yeah. But we brought those to the committee, and Senator White asked him to wait until third reading for, her, for oh. his amendment. Okay. So his is just postponed an extra day so that the committee can discuss it first right. and vote favorably or yeah, not. Yeah, because I looked on the calendar and I noticed yep. that there wasn't any vote and I went, ooh, I wonder what happened. Yeah, they just asked for an extra day. Oh, okay. All right, so I have to look tomorrow. Yes. Get uh, updated. So um, we're going to take this line, not line by line, but section by section. And um, the first one is consent of candidates. And there were some changes there. Yep. So I'm just going to let you jump in. I have my notes sure. if I see anything that I need to ask you about, but S go ahead. Sounds good. Do you want to you want to maybe first talk about how we got here? Oh, I, I, you know, I meant to do that. How, right, because we used to use uh, early, early voting, yeah. um, but how did it all, oh, I had a note here about in 1864, did you even know this? No. That absentee ballots were started in 1864 to accommodate Civil War soldiers. Yes, I had actually heard that. Yep. I didn't know that. There's a, there's a long history of absentee voting for people who couldn't make it to the polling place on election day, and uh, Civil War soldiers would certainly yeah, be, a, be, exactly. be among those. Long walk home to Vermont from yeah, uh, so it down goes, south. It goes way back, um, and w we need to do some research on it to see the history in Vermont, but we know that the current absentee voter provision goes back at least until 1977. Oh, really? Uh, we've had people taking advantage of it more and more each year over time. Last year it was about 25, the last election it was about 25 percent of all Vermonters wow. chose to vote by mail so, or, or to vote early, so you saw that number going yep. up and up. 
And then with COVID in the 2020 election, it was actually 75% of all Vermonters who voted used uh, the mail-in option. Now, how did, was there a federal law that was passed that allowed us to do the mail-in voting? What, what was the sequence of events that brought us to where we are, actually? Yeah, so yeah. vote by mail itself has just been around for a, a long time right. as an option. The, uh, the way that states administer elections are basically left to the states. So this would have been a state law back in, in 1977, mostly to let people, you know, if they were going to be out of town, if they were uh, yeah. too infirm to make it to the polling place, things like that. Uh, and then it eventually evolved to no excuse absentee voting. Like if this is you know good for one person, may maybe we should make it more available. Right. And right. Uh, it's just expanded and expanded after that. And then came COVID. So uh, it's about a year ago, maybe not today, but very pretty close to about is. a year ago. I think ago. it was today or yesterday. That yeah, that no. we, we had to send everybody home from our office yeah. and figure out how to work remotely. And then we had to start thinking about how the heck are we gonna run a primary election and a presidential election yeah. in the middle of a global pandemic. Town meeting day just slipped under the wire, uh, so we didn't have to worry. You know, the, the virus That's hadn't right. really That's come right. to I Vermont. Went to town meeting. Yep, right. town town meeting slipped in under the wire, and then um, we had to figure out what to do for the the rest of the elections. And and we used kind of two guiding principles throughout all that to. To, to guide how we approached it, it was to preserve the voting rights of all Vermonters and protect the health of our voters and election workers. Because you know, it's a lot of the people who are working our elections are among our most vulnerable, are the older right, population right. of folks. And through it all, we needed to protect the integrity of our elections. So we had to figure out what was the best way to do this, planning for a worst case scenario because we saw what was happening right. in Wisconsin. We saw it happen in a couple other yep. states that had later primaries where they had long lines, people kind of homemade PPE, you know, yeah. <laughs> going with garbage bags <laughs> right, and, exactly. and homemade masks and um, really having to choose between their health and their right to vote. And we didn't want to force Vermonters into that choice at all. Now, did our legislatures have to, legislature have to pass laws to allow you um, to do the mail-in voting, right? They did, yeah. they did, because um, what we wanted to do, our proposal was to mail every active registered right. voter an actual ballot, and the law did not allow for that. So we had to go in there and, and make the right. case for that, and the legislature agreed and said, yes, you can do this for 2020. It really gave broad discretion. Luckily, we have a very good reputation, I think, in right. relationship with the legislature. And so they gave the Secretary of State the ability to issue any directive that he needed to to keep Vermonters safe while they were voting. So we could change procedures, we could do mail voting, right. uh, we could decide what was best. Um, and so we had that wide discretion to do it. And that was the, the path that we took from there. And so with all of those unknowns and not knowing, like, was there going to be a spike? Because there was all this talk that there's going to yep. be a spike in the yep. fall. So we thought, here we go, we're gonna run into the November elections and there's gonna be a surge and people are either gonna be afraid to vote or people are gonna end up you know, spreading it around at polling yep, places. Right. What's the best way to prepare for that? And we thought it was to mail every active registered voter a ballot. That's great. Yep. How did the, how did the walk-in um, vote, how did the walk-in ballots work? Were there, were there still a few people that came to the polling place on election day? Yeah, there were. You know, our approach was we, we mail everybody a ballot. We right. encourage as many people as possible to, to put it in the mail, to put it in a drop box. It was right. a big increased use of, of drop boxes right. because if you recall, there was all these issues around the post office right around yeah. that time exactly. too. So people were afraid they weren't going right. to get back on time. Yep. So use a, use a drop box, deliver it to your town clerk's office. Get as many people as possible to do that. We did a big campaign pushing for that, pushing for people to return uh, at least 10 days in advance. Here's how you do it. Here's how you get it in the envelope um, and get it back. Postage paid to make it as easy as possible. Yeah. And, and we got that number of 75%, which achieved what we wanted it to do because then we only had 25% of people appearing in person. We didn't want to take that option away either. Yeah. If you want to vote in person, you can. But with 25%, of the total turnout being in person, it was manageable. There weren't right. long lines. Right. We could wipe we could down the stations. Keep the social distance. And, keep the social yeah. distance, and um, it, it just it worked really well. And even though we had record turnout, 
we had um, over 40,000 more voters than we've ever had yeah, turnout. Yeah, I think that's amazing. That's great. Yeah, so those are some of the reasons why that went so well and people liked it so much that the legislature immediately said, let's think right. about making this a You're permanent You're messing option. up candidates, though. They got to start. <laughs> they have to start really early because you're voting yeah. way before Election Day now. Yep, we're and putting so, out those ballots 45 yep. days in advance of yeah. the election. So we better get used to people uh, campaigning in the winter. That's right. <laughs> Because they're going to have to get their messages out. Maybe they could compress those <laughs> you think? campaigns no, just no, a little no, bit. No, no, <laughs> no, no. Well, I don't, uh, when we get to talk about uh, Corey Parent's amendment, because that has to do with expanding voters. And I'm like, I can't think of how much more, when you mail it to the home, yeah. how much more can you do? And, and then you send, then you give them a self-addressed paid stamped envelope to mail it back. Yeah. We're a good state. Yeah, we should talk about that because the way we approached it in 2020 was for the primary in August. Yeah. We just did a postcard saying, hey, do you want to vote by mail? Right. Here's how you request a ballot, so a request system. Right. For the November general, we got everybody a ballot. Right. And then, of course, town meetings and you know annual school meetings and things like that are a whole other different right. creature. Right. So our approach is to be, do, let's do what we did in 2020 again in 2022 just do the November election. Wait and see how town and annual meetings go. The primaries are yet another kind of creature because <laughs> you have much lower turnout and you have to send three ballots, one for each of the major parties. There's a chance for people to get that wrong. Expense. And the expense on that, yeah. imagine three times the right. ballots in a mailing. So we're, we, we, we think, keep it, for, keep it simple, keep it for the general right now and not expand it to those others quite yet. We should so that'll, look at that'll it in the future, all be though. laid out in the effective dates I think um, so. in the yeah. bill. Yep. All right, so let's. Um, I apologize for not asking you that. I had no, wanted to okay. ask you that, and I think it's important for people to figure out how we got here. Um, right. So we're looking at S15, and the first uh, section is the consent of candidates. And if you mm -hmm. can talk about that, that would be great. Sure. Um, oh, before I do, I have to say one thing. I have to thank the town clerks. Oh, for what they them. did yes. in 2020, for, yep. for, for the situation that they had to deal with, they were just amazing partners. Yep. They were asked to go above and beyond, and they did. And, you know, they care about people's right to vote as yep. much as well, any of us do. Well, they worked very hard. And they worked really hard yep. through the whole election. And you're right about all the people. that they, I, I heard that people were coming out of the woodwork to volunteer yeah. because they understood the... They the did. We thought for sure year. we would have a shortage of poll workers, but people yeah, came out right, and, and right. volunteered. So yeah. sorry to get off, oh, off track there a little right. bit, but we always have those, to thank uh, our, our great town Those clerks. candidates who aren't going to be talking to you. That's right. Because <laughs> they're going to have to start early. That's right. All right. So here we are. We've got the S15. And um, let's see. That first provision, is that about nicknames? No, it's yeah, consent of, it's the valid signatures. Nicknames. Yeah, the reason that this was was modified was because we had candidates, and this is not this is not really related to vote by mail. There were a few other little things that snuck in there right. um, that they were advocating for issues in their supposed nicknames. Oh, I was wondering. Yep. I haven't seen any of that, but I can imagine. So it was, yeah. um, you know, uh, Jim. I love F fifteen, F thirty five, thirty five, Smith. Right. Or you know, right. so they had. A, they were just advocating for an issue within their name, and right. um, it really wasn't genuine. It was kind of playing around with the with the ballot. Right. So this just makes sure that the a nickname is one that they actually go yes. by and that they're not advocating. Which has to be in quotes. So it has would to be, be in quotes. Patricia Pat McDonald. That's right. You could use yeah. Pat. I yep. think you could get away with that one. I, I was thinking about that. <laughs> I don't think anybody knows my name is yeah. actually Patricia. So that's but, what that section yeah. was about, really. And then you have an application that they have to file now to verify that Pat Pat McDonald is really Patricia that really McDonald. Is. Yep. Or a Boots What's that guy's name? Boots Wardinsky. Boots yeah. Wardinsky. Yeah, I like that. He's been that. on the progressive ballot for a yeah. while. I like. I always like his. They gave, gives me a chuckle. I right. don't know. Why. That's not. A, I don't think that's an issue advocacy unless he's selling shoes or something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, but you know, some people have some interesting names. That's right. Um, and then second one here is uh, the location of polling places the, uh, and outdoor yeah. polling places. Yeah. Who has outdoor polling places? Yeah, you'd be surprised. So there were a lot that happened in in 2020. Amazingly. Um, 
and that was one of those things that the that I think some clerks in towns wanted to keep around in case they ever wanted to use them again. Right. Uh, so there were some places where they set up tents outside. Sweet. At, in Barrie, they had the BOR was opened up, and you know there was no ice in it, and people could drive in and vote. Um, it was, people don't have to get out of their car. The ballot comes to them. They fill out their ballot. They put it in a in an envelope, and they hand it back to the uh, to That's the clerk great. or to the poll worker. So just well, making that, that was very easy. Um, imaginative to yep. to be able to address social distancing. It really was, and we've got a great picture of someone who uh, voted by horse in Lincoln. Oh, stop! <laughs> I love this. It's amazing. State. <laughs> so now it's part of statute. And now it's in statute that they yeah. have that option, as long as they, you know, there's a lot of other language in there that right. makes sure um, that they're doing it with two poll workers to make sure the ballot gets transferred securely, that right. they, they give options to people, that they have the same security that they would have inside the polling right. place for the, the ballot but and getting it to the This one that box. you got in there, it says, indoor alternative must be available nearby. Uh, nearby. That might yeah. be a little tricky. It could be. Um, if you've got an outdoor area, but if it's raining or something, you've got to be That's able to right. switch so people don't have to ride halfway across town. Correct. So, um, all right, so yeah. write this down. This is where I want you to make a change in the statute. Oh, sure, okay, let ready? me get my pen out. I'm so ready. it says, candidate must stay a reasonable distance. Yes. But you should put, as determined by the town clerk or the governing body, because people need to be reminded every place they look that it's not up to them to determine what... I had an issue with this in Berlin one year, yep. so that's why it's ringing in my head, that at a reasonable distance is set by the town, not by you. That's right. So That's right. I, I there think is what, another section of the law in there that says that the clerk is in charge as the. Oh, the, it does. Oh, I, it, but the, not in this. The bill. presiding officer there at oh, the. Okay. And so the clerk determines. So, like you know, they determine what's a reasonable distance right. to allow free ingress and egress from the polling place right. because you don't because want people intimidated. Because we had somebody who was truly in, in your face. Yep. Um, and it got to be a big. Ooh, ha, ha, yeah. with Rosemary, yeah. and she handled it beautifully, but As the guy had does. no clue that she was the one saying uh, what's reasonable. So Yeah, so you imagine if you have an outdoor polling place, that would give those candidates an opportunity to get more in your face, right. and so I voting just, should be done in a very sacrosanct yeah. we, way. I think we kept it 100 feet away, which, but we have the space to, to have it 100 feet yep. away, and so you have to take that into consideration, right. too, if it's a tight space what is reasonable so yeah. I just think yeah. the more you say it the more people um, um, will, will see it and know that it's they're not the determining factor right so anyway, all right, so <laughs> even if that they was, think got they my are. got my thing in um, <laughs> but we talked about drive up voting and mm -hmm. they said um, without leaving their car Right, and, and, that, and that was something that's that has always been offered in a way to voters with disabilities. That right. the justices of the peace or the poll workers could come outside to the car to help them vote, but this expands it even further to other people who might want to take advantage that's of it. Great. That's great. So, the ballot transfers, mm -hmm. and this is very important, not necessarily for the voters, yeah. but I was down in Woodstock, and there was a big issue about the way one one bag was it was um we had tv cameras there and everything it, and i was brought down there were a lot of us from around the state brought down to and i'm trying to remember it was a um it was a pretty contentious uh runoff i think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there was a big discussion about bringing the bringing the um bag in and the tag wasn't right. on and there's supposed to be two uh, poll workers there to, to try to, and and so people really need to know the election officials need to know how that works yeah it's it's really yeah. important you saw it in this last election in some of these states where the results were close right it's very important how people handle those ballots once they go into the bags that they're sealed and the seal can't be broken right. except by um, a judge ordering it yep. to be broken yeah um, so it's all about the security and handling of those ballots and being able to trust the results in case you have to go back and do yeah. a recount. Because they had the poll watchers that were at this uh, in, um, um, what did I just say I was? Woodstock. Woodstock. Um, I was thinking Waterbury, and that's wrong. Woodstock, um, they were really right on it. Yeah. They were watching every 
everything. How do you yep. train the, the town clerks? So they go to a training? Yep, we have annual mm -hmm. trainings. Um, we issue a lot of procedures and guides. Uh, our staff, uh, you know, we have the smallest election staff in the country with just five people. <laughs> but they do, they do in, you know, when we're not conducting elections, we're conducting trainings. Um, and That's the clerks great. association also does some trainings for their members and right. so yeah, a lot of it is there's a lot of stuff here they have yep. to know yep. and one thing could really put a monkey wrench in the yeah, whole really uh, yeah the whole yep. thing yep. We're pretty so lucky. Um, I didn't even know what this says they said accessible voting system mm -hmm. that somebody could ask what is that yeah so we have a um, an accessible voting system that um, we put in place in 2018, and it's a state-of-the-art system. We're one of the, the first states in the country to, to do it. it. It lets voters with disabilities vote privately and independently. Um, so they might have motor skills or they might have vision um, issues, oh. uh, but this system is easier for them to use. It can um, expand the text. Um, so it may, lets them record their own choices and, and make their own recordings um, with this system. It marks the ballot for them, great, uh, so that they can vote independently. And then it prints off the ballot at the at the end, and they can see that their choices were all. Now, where put is in this right available? Place. It's available every in every town. Every town has one. Really. Um, so if you have something like drive up voting, you need to make sure that that accessible voting system is also available to these folks. Huh. And are they able to bring somebody with them to help them? Sure. Oh, interesting. Yep. yep, they can do that. But, you know, it used to be that you maybe had someone who would have to fill out their ballot choices right. for right. them. And that was also allowed if they yep. couldn't do it themselves. But this enables many more voters with disabilities to, to act independently oh, and vote independently, which is great. That's great. Yep. Um, so Australian ballot system, um, I don't know what's really new here except how things are voted, um, that the voters of town, city, village may vote to mail every registered voter, the ma but the school right. board's got a different approach that's it i found that interesting what could you explain that yeah sure so this um the primary focus of the bill is on the november general election right. as you know but for local elections if they've chosen to go to australian ballot instead right. of doing their floor votes and their floor meetings this gives them the allows them to mail a ballot to every registered voter it's not in the law right now they can't mail their ballots out um, under COVID, they could because yep. they had an emergency law passed at the beginning of this year for town meeting. So if they did, so they could go to Australian ballot and they could mail uh, voters a ballot as we got in, in Berlin. Yep. Um, so this gives flexibility to the towns to do this. If, if they go to Australian ballot, they can mail ballots out. Doesn't require them to at this point. And that's what um, you know, Senator Parent was kind of pushing for was that you do mail out a ballot for every mm -hmm. election. Okay, so now now I'm I'm a little confused. So if you have town meeting, yeah, because hopefully when this is over we'll be able to go back to right. our town meeting. Right. Would they vote? Would they mail me a ballot anyway? If the town, if the legislative body, so right. the select board, in the case of town right. meeting, chose to go to um, not chose to go to, they could decide to mail out ballots if you were already an Australian ballot town. And then I would bring my ballot in. Instead of voting that day, I would you could or you could mail it mail in. it in. Yep. Yeah, but then I'd yep. miss the lunch from the fire department. Well, that's you know that's one <laughs> of the things we have to think about if we're going to go to all mail ballots for town meeting day is what it will do to town right. meeting. I love town meeting, yeah. and I I was very upset in our town when we did go to Australian ballot. Yep. Because it was, I mean, there was the usual fifty people. It was the same right. group of people, but. Um, and I know more people voted under Australian ballots, so right. I understand right. the importance a, of that. Yep, but it's, it's a, fun. Yeah. And we changed, um, one year we changed uh, the highway maintenance budget just like that mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we voted an extra 30000 for something. Yeah. And yeah. I thought, that's just so cool. You know? I love to go to see my predecessor. Paul Gillies oh, there, Paul Gillies. moderating the, the meeting, a former so, deputy secretary yes, of state. Yes, that's true. Paul, yes, he's great. We have two great. of them in Berlin. He's been doing that a, year, a few years. <laughs> so up for, as far as school um, budgets go, it's the, 
It's the legislative body. So again, it's the school board, if the town has one, or the union um, school board um, can decide to mail a ballot to every registered voter if it's an Australian ballot okay. district. So, um, and now, for this is for Australia. They, we, we mail out and pay for it, or you mail out and we pay for it? So when towns choose town. to do it, the town... The town pays for it. The way okay. that the school uh, portion of this is set up the, is if the school district decides to mail out ballots, uh, they bear the cost, but the town does the mailing. Oh, well, that the wouldn't make it easy. Okay, that's yep. interesting. Yep. Okay. And just, you know, we've, we've, we haven't gone there. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a difficult conversation. There's a lot to it about whether we go to all mail balloting for local elections right. you know, one size fits all just may not work right for local towns some want to do it something you've got small towns you've got tab towns that use tabulars you've got towns that do hand count you've got big real big towns and cities who where it might make a lot more sense yeah so that's a, a lot a, more work to be done isn't there there's, there still is we want to just take a small step forward yeah. with, with this bill well that's good that you're doing that because people yep. need to get used to see how it works i think so so the next section is authorized applicants applicant form duplicates i didn't understand the title but what it really got down to is if you lost or did not receive your ballot we I would have to notify you, or the town notifies you. And how do I, how do yeah, I trying prove to that I that I didn't receive it? I mean, that's sort of a my my word, I guess. Yeah, I'm trying to remember this this section, Pat. But I think it's um, if someone claims to have lost a ballot, they get another one from the town. They vote. Their original one shows up. Then the, you, the clerks, uh, the town has to notify the Secretary of State, oh, and then see. we open an investigation yep. into that. Ah, good. Yeah. One of my recommendations from Campaign for Vermont was to do a little investigating and perhaps, um, you know, put somebody on notice that they are, you know, are frauding, defrauding the system and hold them accountable and maybe... That might stop a whole bunch of people from worrying about fraud. Yeah, I'll tell you, if we hear about it, we look into it, we Do put you? them on notice. Um, in the last, in the 2020 election, with all of those mail ballots that we sent out, over 400,000, yeah. uh, we had seven complaints that we referred to the Attorney General's Did office. Did you? Oh, that's not very many, but it's good It's not for you. that many, and uh, you know, there may have been others out there yeah. that, that happened. I'm sure there were at least a few. But if it was on the grand scale that people like to talk about, I'm sure we would have heard a lot more yeah, than, than right. seven. And I'll tell you that of those seven that we referred to the attorney general's office, they looked into them all. They investigated every one of them and found that only one of them was actionable. Um, and that one was a person who kind of made a bet with a family member that he could go in and vote twice. Well, well, he got caught. <laughs> lost that, didn't he? Well, wow, that's a you know, good... And the other ones, we often find that they're, they're kind of like mix-ups of maybe, you know, um, uh, John Smith Sr. went in and, yeah. and voted at the polling place, and the, and the poll worker checked off John Smith Jr. Junior, right. Junior mailed in his ballot, and so it looks like Junior voted twice. And so right. on a fur little further investigation, you find out it was an innocent mistake. Yeah. This is Vermont. Yep. Yep. So... Um, uh, some of these, I think, furnishing early voter absentee ballot envelopes, you furnish, that's right. and the town pays. That's a that's a, how that's a lot of work. You must have some system. How do you know what ballot I get? Right, I mean, it's it that's is a yeah. heck of a system you've got. It is a lot of work. We really learned a lot in the last year. Um, town doesn't pay for the envelopes. Right. Just so you know, we we do that mass mailing in. Yeah. November. Well, actually, it happens by October 1, so at least 30, um, 40 days ahead yep. of the general election. We organize the mail house. Um, we organize the address list. We pull the voter checklist, which is maintained by the towns. So yep. the towns maintain all their checklists. We pull it on a certain date, and then we have professionals who help us organize that mailing and get it right, and they did a really good job. There were a few mistakes here and there. Um, but they do a really good job of matching the right ballot, and you got to yeah. think every town has a different ballot. Yeah, so the that's right, right ballot that's what I don't, to I mean, the right voter, bless you, with the right return envelope to the right place. 
um, and we, we do all that and we pay for that. So we will pay for the printing, the postage, the return postage coming right. back and all of the ballots and envelopes. Um, th there is nothing in this bill about the checklist, is there? I didn't see a section. Um, no, I, d I don't I, think there I, is. We're probably going to write to put something in there about you've got to you've got to make sure that checklist is right. Yeah. And if and I know there was always a, a time frame where you couldn't where you couldn't take somebody's name off that you knew died. I mean, there are some things that just need to be changed. Yeah. Um, I know a nonprofit who shall remain nameless. I'm involved in, and they sent out a a mailer and used the checklist, and they got back so many. Um, mail that were just wrong, yeah. and yeah. Um, something's got to be done about. Besides, it'll save us a bunch of money to get it right the first time. A absolutely, we know we need to focus on the checklist, yeah. and we. It, I'll tell you, it gets better every single day. Yeah. Um, something it might be, you know, you know, automatic voter registration. You make a change at the DMV now. Yes, I of, know that. Your old, uh, yes, right. Stomping that was grounds. Always an issue. Make make a change at the DMV, and it automatically updates right. their record with us right. now, all behind the scenes every night through a data transfer. Yeah. So it's getting better and better. In aug last August, when we did the postcard mailing, um, we forwarded had those postcards forwarded so that if someone had moved out of state, they got that. Right. We, we understood. Um, and cleaned up the checklist from that mailing. And then in November, when we did it again, it was not forwardable, so those were bouncing back to the town clerks. So we did a lot of work on the so checklist So did somebody the take those and, and fix it? And yeah, find there's, there's been a lot Is of work Does statutes still need to be changed, though, about some of these? Um, you know, the, the, the death of uh, people that died, I know there was yeah. something about waiting X number of years or something, but it seems to me... On air, with, dead yeah, is dead. <laughs> with, yeah, with death <laughs> records, we get those every month, and we, we forward them on to the clerks, and they can take oh. them off. But you can't purge someone very easily from the checklist, and that's by by design. But but to, but these days we have same day voter registration. That's so if you've made a mistake to purge, you can add them that, back that on. That is the backup. You're absolutely so right. So it there. should be purged first and apologize later yeah. and fix it right. Yeah. Yep, and cool. the other thing that we're doing, which is which is really cool, we've joined this consortium of of thirty other that's states, great. the Electronic Registration Information Center. So we send our data out to this group, and the states all control this data and are part, and they run the consortium, and they throw it all together and against death records and ah. against vital records and against um, the uh, moves, and they can see yeah. if someone has moved to another state and maybe not yet told Vermont they've right. moved there. Right. Um, they can see if you have duplicates. You can, they can see if people voted in more than one state. They can see if people moved within Vermont. Yeah. So they're going to help us clean our records even even more. We're really focused yeah, on that. Because, because there is a section in here about if you've moved after your vote, after your ballot's been mailed, and yes. you move, and, and, and how, to, how to fix that so you don't get the opportunity to to vote twice or to That's at least right. vote yep. in the There's right place. There's a piece place. on there to tell the clerks how to handle yep. those after right. the address list. This is, is very born. thorough, this yep. bill. i got to yep. give her credit. Give uh, give Will Senning a lot of credit, Yes, I was going to mention a, him. You did not. A great Will director a great of guy. elections. Um, he's, yeah, he's the director. Is that his title? Director, director of, of elections, yep. He is, he is awesome. He's one of the best in the country, and now he's part of the leadership of their National Association of Election Directors. Oh, is which he is really? Great. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's that's very impressive. So here we have, um, let's see, da, 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 mailing of general election ballots. You you would just cover this SOS mails, right. forty three days before. Right. Postage paid, return, and you pay for that. That's correct. Love this. And As, you, see, you say you. It's you, the state the, of I Vermont. Mean, you the state. When I say me, I mean the town. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you pay uh, right out of your pocket. Right. Um, and then, um, uh, you know, some of these, they run into each other. They sort of... Yeah, they do a little bit. They that for, that, I don't want um, to bar people to death. So let's we will, talk about... Ba sorry, let's skip ahead. to ballot curing, securing okay. drop boxes, because talk about... Um, this would confuse me. How, yeah. when, at what point can you decide that a ballot is uh, deemed effective and that you have to call the voter. You don't see the actual ballot. We do don't you? see it. No. This is so. This is the clerks will see it as it comes back. They'll see the ballot, they but they'll know see. it's mine. 
Okay, so all right, I'll this this let me bothered walk. me in yeah. testimony. So go right ahead. They will, they will not know it's yours, at okay. least in the way the process is set up. So actually, look at this. Pack. Oh yes, we want samples. We've got some samples. So, yes, yeah, so, sam samples here. So maybe so this if is, um, Zachary can um, hone in on this, I think that's your that's <laughs> this the one camera. over here. Yep. Okay. So this um, this is what your ballot would come in. Right. It's got the official election mail logo on it, and inside it, you're going to have your ballot. You're going to have your secrecy envelope, right? And you're going to have your return envelope, which should be addressed to your town clerk. Um, you're going to vote your ballot, and then uh, you're going to put it inside this secrecy envelope. And on here, it's really important. There's language on here that says, um, "I'm a resident of you know such right. and such town. I am voting only for myself. I haven't voted more than once. All under the pains and penalties of perjury." Right. Uh, so there's another, you know, deterrent to, to um, voter fraud there. And so then you put it into the return envelope and send it back. Now, when the clerks uh, or the uh, elections staff at the town clerk's office gets these, um, they will take it out of this envelope if they're doing the processing right. early. But then they, now they've got this. So they've got your ballot inside, but your ballot has nothing on it that identifies you. Right. The ballot right. itself. Um, but they do have the outer ballot that says who you are. So they're going to check you off the checklist as having returned a ballot. Um, and then some, some towns will separate this immediately and put it through the tabulator, okay. which doesn't tally the votes, but it might count them. Right. Um, but this is at the point where they might say, aha, Pat didn't sign the envelope. Okay, that's the curing part. She has a defective ballot. That's right. where they say Pat didn't sign okay. it as a defective ballot. Or ballot was outside the envelope. Right. Pat has a defective ballot. And then maybe you didn't fill anything out at all, in which case it's a defective ballot and we don't know whose it is. Right. But they mark it as a defective ballot. Yeah. Okay. So the curing provision comes in. We've had people. We had people vote by mail. They forgot to sign it. And they're like, oh, my God, I think I might have forgotten to sign it. They call in. Right. The town clerk says, yeah, you forgot to sign it, but there's nothing in law that says you can come down and put your signature on there and fix it. Sorry, you're out so, of luck. And now there is because of and this. And now book. there is. So, that, so and this makes me feel better because I was talking to the uh, couple of legislators who weren't sure about this. It's the outside, the secrecy envelope is what can be cured That's or correct. defective. That's it's correct. not the ballot inside the envelope. Nope, you can't come in and change you. your vote. Uh, maybe you have buyer's remorse or something. I like have that. had <laughs> on occasion. I, I, Bruce and I vote early all the time. I don't ask me how we got started like this. And yet I go to town meeting, but I always think, what if I got sick or what if something yeah. happened? So, yeah. and I must tell you, once or twice I have had buyer's remorse yeah. because yeah. darned if they don't do something really stupid right, after right I vote the for them. Yeah, so now you can come down and there's some provisions in here that say, so now the clerks, okay. um, when they process, they have to process within three days of receiving uh, a, a mail ballot back. Right. And then they have to um, send out a postcard if there's a, a defective ballot. We're going to provide the postcards to all the clerks should okay. this bill pass. Right. And if there's something wrong, they just check the box that says, oh, you forgot to sign it or it wasn't in the envelope, Great. pop the postcard in the mail. They also have to update our elections management system. And uh, your viewers may not know this, but every voter has a, every registered voter has a My Voter page that they right. can go to right. and check, uh, mvp.vermont.gov, where they can go and look and see the status of their ballot, that it's been mailed, that the clerk has received it back, that it's um, been marked defective. And so you could actually take a look at those and know that your ballot is defective and right. know you have to do something I about it. I didn't know that till listening to this. And there is, there's so much information on that voter page. There is, yep. You have about 10 or 12, I have a whole, whole list here, of voter registration, absentee ballot status, mail and application status, poll location, elected officials. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is, this is great. It's this got so excellent. much information there yeah. for every single voter. You can see a sample ballot before yep. the election. You can update your information. Um, if you become a challenged voter for some reason, they think that maybe you should be knocked off the checklist because you haven't voted in a while. Right. Um, you can respond right there on your own voter page oh, and so say, it takes hey, messages? I'm still here. I still want to be around and, uh, oh. and vote. So don't knock me off the checklist. So, and what, do that again, the, the email? It's uh, MVP 
www.vermont.gov. Vermont spelled out, you think? Yes. Uh, yeah, okay. We'll put that on the, um, on the, the lower half there of the screen. That's great. I heard about that and I went, whoa, where have I been? Yeah, it's a, it's a great resource. And a little Google map to your polling place. Which is, oh, seriously, yeah, big yeah. brother. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> there are no secrets anymore. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, so, all right, so let's talk about um, the drop boxes because sure. uh, that's pretty interesting. It depends on the number of, uh, the number of districts and, 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 and it's got all kinds of... Um, of information about how to deal with it. Could you talk about that? Yeah, we wanted to put something in statute. We ended up, you know, if we're going to do vote by mail, we want to give voters plenty of options for returning their ballots. Right. And drop boxes is a great are a great option. You don't have to you have to go inside. You can drop it in a in a drop box, but you want to make sure that it's secure. Right. You want to make sure that it's, you know, obvious and accessible. So we wanted some statutory language around that to define if towns are going to put in drop boxes, they need to be you know, secured to right. the concrete or secured to the wall um, inside of a municipal building or at a municipal building, mm -hmm. monitored by video surveillance. That's expensive. It can be. Hopefully a lot of places have existing areas where right. they can do that. And towns got really uh, creative about yeah. that. And uh, how, ma how many can a uh, town have? I mean, something like, like Burlington, because it has so many districts. They yeah. And do you provide them, or do they have to pay for them? How does that work? So we made funding available to pay for those okay. in, in 2020. A lot of towns took advantage of that. I think some over 150, wow. a pretty big Great. number, took advantage of those, and they were really popular. A lot of people used right. them. Um, I remember uh, hearing about in Richmond, people were just lined up with their oh, cars in, in their cars, just dropping that's it great. off, and everybody was having a, a good time voting on the that's first excellent. day that they could. Um, and we're going to make another round of funding available for that, great. and that's part of the appropriations in the bill is, is one-time expense to allow for drop boxes. And, you know, depending on the size of the town, you can have more than more than one if it makes right. sense for the size right. of the town. But most towns will, will do fine, just fine with one. Yep. Yeah, that's great. I, I, was ours outside the town clerk's office? Was that where ours I don't, was? I didn't I, use I it, so I'm not know. sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I bet that's where it was because they yeah. have... Uh, the uh, video police station cameras is right there, there, too. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, right outside their door. That would be a good thing. Um, okay, so let's see. The next section, oh, that it's pretty much what you just said about the, the uh, mail postcards. And right. then if it's five days before the election, right. they don't send the postcards. That wouldn't but make sense. But if yep. it's a small place, so we call yep. or try to track people down and tell them that they that there's a problem and That's coming. Right. And although not not everyone uses the internet, but again, the update that oh, yeah. my oh, voter email. page. Right. Yep. Oh, and you can send a message that way. Uh, it'll update, so you you can you'll have to check yourself. Yeah. If so you're you'll worried see. about it, like mm, I wonder if it got down there and I haven't been able to get through the town clerk right. today, I'll look online and see that if it's if it's been marked effective or not. Okay. Yep. Um, tabulator. This is a big section. Yeah, so this is a, a lot of this is about admit, doing 30 days of early processing by right. town clerks. That's one of the reasons 2020 was successful. Yeah, because you allowed them, them more to, time. right. Because they aren't used to dealing with that right. many mail in ballots. They take longer to open and process. Yeah. Um, so, what it does let them do is you know, start separating those envelopes, marking off the checklists. Some towns chose to put them through the tabulator, and it, again, it just gives you a one, two, three process. Does not tally. You don't know any results right. until election day. And some chose to just kind of stack them up and get them ready to either hand count or go through the tabulator election night. But it, that extra processing got them ready to go so we could have okay, results. So there's an, when they do it early, you don't get a tally. How do you get the tally on election day? That's another another button that you push yep, to tally. Yep, the machine tally. keeps track. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's because I remember, we wait till seven o'clock, and then start to tally, and we'd right. be there while everybody's calling, wondering who won. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Well, the pressure was on. We the pressure <laughs> is on to have results immediately. Never used to be that way, but yeah, now yeah. everybody expects it election night. Well, a lot. A lot of people have the tabulator, which is instant, but yep. still there's other s elections sometimes that are hand counted. Right. And, uh, and that's an old process all by itself yep. about, yep. Uh, you know, you, I count, you count, right. you double check. 
Yeah. That's yep. another whole thing. And another thing that goes to election integrity here is that the processing has to be done in public, in the open. The public can, can come and watch. You could right. watch it on election right. night, so right. why shouldn't you be able to come and watch it in those 30 days before? Um, so this gives guidance, not guidance, but requirements for the clerks to do yeah. that in in the open, transparently. Yeah. So well, I remember when we were down it. in Woodstock uh, because there were some questions about did the person mean this this box or that box? Oh my! Yep. They were just they were they would the people would come over and and we'd be deciding what what it meant. Trying to um, figure out the voters' yeah, intent, exactly. if a little stray mark in yeah, there. And, yep. People, I think people don't realize that you got to do this right. Yeah. And I'll fill in the fill Very in the careful. little circle. Yep. Um, Oh, um, the, the defective ballot. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one killed me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to know these, who these people are. Okay. The same voter may cure a ballot de uh, declared defective not more than twice for any single election. How many have we had I, over the years? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, well, you really. have well none so far because yeah. you haven't been able to cure. Uh, I, but the oh, committee did get some chuckles over that, and yes. I think said, I, if I you can't that, get it right the second I time. Exactly, you should stop voting. <laughs> We're not going to let you do it again. I, I thought, I thought, oh, that that's there for a reason. Right. But uh, <laughs> I, uh, I just for, I put that in I put that in quotes in my notes. I it went, might be is, some language from other states saying, "Hey." Well, you know. well, but you know, people, we do mess up. <laughs> yes. Twice, maybe not, but anyway. I'd be embarrassed to go back and ask right. after the second <laughs> right. time I'd keep quiet. Right. Um, oh, this one is kind of, voting in person, you are not allowed to bring the ballots of anybody else. I like that one. That says, what if they do not bring, uh, you're, not, you're not supposed to bring somebody else's ballot with you. No, that, that's or, or not that, what that section says. Oh, um, what does it mean? If they bring... If they don't, if you were mailed a ballot and you, and you show up at the polling place and you don't have your ballot with you, how does the clerk handle that? That's what that guidance is. Oh, about. no kidding! I yep. completely. I better yep. read that again. So you can still vote um, if you're you're if you're oh, you have not been checked off the checklist yes. yet. I, I'm so I, that's what, I misread that's what my that notes. About. Right. So if you forgot to bring it, they would figure out a way to. Let you vote. Yep. If you forgot to bring it, they look okay, at the checklist right. and say you haven't returned a, a mail ballot yet. You can right. vote. But if your ballot shows up later, uh, you're going to get a call from us. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Go immediately to jail. Um, the, what I thought uh, was uh, Senator Rahm suggested that uh, that that you guys look at the language access yep. um, and that you would re uh, come up with a report to see how many people might have needed language assistance. And I think particularly, I think she comes from Burlington, and that mm -hmm. and there's there's a lot of folks in Burlington who um, probably need special ballots. Yeah, there are. That was a that was a great addition. We'd been doing some work over the last couple of years with the New American community, yep. so that you know there are refugee communities. There are a number of folks who might struggle with English. Um, so we worked with Burlington and uh, Winooski as t uh, areas with two cool. of the, the biggest um, immigrant population, New American mm -hmm. populations. And we made videos on how to vote oh, nice. and had them translated into the six most frequently used languages. Excellent. Um, we did, um, there were some mailers and outreach, and we worked with uh, some, of, some of the nonprofits up there that, that work with those groups to make sure that they weren't intimidated by, by getting out to vote. That's great. Yeah, Good and so we're going we're gonna to talk about that some more in this study and how we can maybe extend that yeah. to some other communities. I, I, I can't imagine you would know this, but I, I remember hearing, and I, I don't remember the number, I'm going to have to look it up, Burlington High School deals with an inordinate amount of different languages, yeah. from, uh, and they have to respond to, by having documents in these different languages, yeah. and it's not six, it's yeah. 26, or 20, uh, something, yeah. um, you know, really a lot of, a yeah. lot, which is, it, on the one hand, it's great from a population perspective, because right. it gives us a little diversity, but... Um, a lot of work for the high school. I uh, would yeah, think. absolutely. You don't think of Vermont as a very diverse place. In a lot of ways, it's not. But there are some some yeah, areas some where we have a, a lot of different right. diversity. So we only have a couple of minutes, and I wanted sure. to um, talk about the the three amendments. Okay. Senator Starr was um, actually uh, just the funding mechanism for a position which you yeah, sorely need. We do. So good for you guys. Thank you. 
five people can't do all this. We can't go through what we went through in <laughs> 2020. Just, I uh, can't imagine. <laughs> this uh, COVID haircut that I've let grow out <laughs> here, my hair will be gone. <laughs> that's funny. I like it. Keep it. I think that's good. Um, and Senator Benning, Joe Benning, um, th I think this is where I confuse the other, uh, the other thing I just said about not yep. candidates may not return ballots of a voter. In other words, I can't ask if I'm a candidate. I I can't offer to bring your ballot in or anybody on my paid staff to bring your ballot in, which I right. think is it's just a perception of yep. not good. Yeah, we don't have any evidence that anyone's no. done anything wrong, but you're right. The perception is there. Yep. You're on the ballot. You're out there collecting ballots. Yep. Senator Benning's amendment would limit that too. Yep. You can do it for your family members. You can do it for someone you're a caregiver for. Right. Um, but, but not, uh, yeah. You can't go around and round up ballots. Governor Snelling told me one time, he said, if you're asking the question, it's a conflict. <laughs> right, right. Because <laughs> yeah. I was saying, you know, we were talking about perception. He says, just asking the question gives yep. you the answer. Yeah. So um, there you go. So that so Senator Starr, Senator Benning, Senator Parent, maybe you could talk about that. And you're, sure. the committee's going to talk about this tomorrow, which is, right. uh, be, this video won't be for yep. another day or two, but. Yeah, Senator, Senator Parent's point was if it's good for the November election, why isn't it good for oh, August wow. and for local elections? And we should be trying to expand voting access to oh, okay. all elections. Yeah. And we don't disagree with that. Um, but I think we've got to take it slowly. We've got to walk before we can run. Let's keep it to November. There are different issues with the primary. Yeah. And there are a lot of different issues with the local elections that we need to look at carefully before we go and just expand it to all those elections. Right. It would be really disruptive. There's a lot, to, lot left to do. There is. I think we'll be looking at this for years to come. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's a very good idea to keep to do it one piece at a time because if Jim had such a reaction from people on talking about fraud, yeah. um, there is an issue out there. And just like you know, Governor Snelly said, if you brought it up, there's a problem. Well, right. And, right. and I hope they've given you some funding for education and for that is, getting the yep, word out. That is part of our budget. We know we have to educate Vermonters about this. It's a change to the way that they're used to voting. They right. got a little bit used to it maybe in 2020. Yeah. Um, but I just have to say, we're really lucky to have a Secretary of State who pushes for expanded access right. to voting. You see a lot of contraction of, of voting opportunities in other states. And some of it yeah. may make sense for their states, but some of it is you know, eliminating absentee voting altogether, yep. you know, right. taking away polling places. Really? Some really crazy stuff that's happening in response to a lot of the hyperbole that we heard in well, 2020. Well, people have to... Just take a chill. Take a deep breath. Take we a can, deep breath. We Do can disagree hum. without being disagreeable. <laughs> exactly. Well, there are ways to be able to word your disagreement, yeah. and I think we better learn that again. Yeah. Thank you very much Thank for you, coming Pat. on board. My pleasure. Good I've to see you. I've actually learned something tonight, so even after all the times I've been listening, which is why I'm worried about education, ah. because I sat and listened to those, <laughs> those committees several times, and I still got one or yeah. two things wrong. Well, good to see you face-to-face so, -face and not over Zoom. Thank you very Thanks for coming into the <laughs> studio. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you learned something. Um, if you have any questions, call Will Senig, right? That's right. <laughs> Don't give out his number. Yeah, call the Secretary of State's office. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. And in the meantime, keep listening beyond the sound bites.